All right, guys. Um, this is this is part of the 1.2a notes, the first uh, sort of sequence um, that I was gone. We didn't finish yesterday. So I'm gonna try to finish this. I want you actually to skip this part because I want to be here to discuss this. You know, these two triangles that are on your page paper. There's two pyramids. So I'm gonna skip that. I want you to jump down to the bottom of that page. Um, and I want to define kind of a key term that's gonna come up quite a bit in this class. Um, is the word midpoint. And I, we kind of talked about it in the previous example on the front of the page with the road sign. And hopefully the lighting's not too bad here for you guys. Uh, we'll work with it and I'll change it in the next sequence of this. But most of you know what a midpoint is sort of casually. We want to define it a little more formally with a second vocab word. Um, that means to cut thing in, in half. Um, most of you know the prefix for two um, is by. And if we want to cut something into two sections, we call it bisecting. So these two words are interconnected. Bisect and midpoint are going to be used quite a bit in geometry problems and word problems. And they're tip-offs of how you're going to set up equations later on. Don't overlook them. So I said it a second ago, midpoint is a location that bisects or divides a segment into two equal parts or segment sections or lengths. You can use any of those words. Um, I'm kind of making it simple, sect with sections, kind of putting those two together. And then you get these three problems at the bottom of the page. The first one says, where is the midpoint of, and, and add this little segment line onto your paper, segment AB, where is the midpoint of segment CD, and you're going to use it based on the given locations of these um, points on a number line. So take a minute, first of all, to get these points onto your number line. I don't think I put them on the page. A is to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So A is on here at negative seven. B is at negative 1. You can see C is at 3. And you can see D is at 6. So get those onto your drawing, and then you can answer these, these three questions. This is a good time to pause the video, try the three problems, and then go back and, and see how well you're doing on them kind of at your own pace. I'm going to keep talking through this. You should be pausing and kind of think through it on your own and see if you do it right, fix it from there. So the first one actually for a midpoint between A and B, or a midpoint of this segment from A to B. So we did this on the road sign problem. It's basically the average of the coordinates. You could certainly find the distance between them, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six units. Cut that in half. Half of six is three, and just move three units over. It's one way to get the answer. The other way to do it is to find the average of negative seven and negative one. You know, if you find the average of negative seven or negative one, add them together you get negative 8. Divide by 2, you get negative 4. Either way, you end up with a point at negative 4. So these two questions are asking for a coordinate, like a location. So 4 to the left is your midpoint of AB, which, you know, that little red dot should make sense. Again, you might want to pause now if you got that one wrong and redo this one, see if you get this one right. CD should be between, obviously, between C and D. You know, the distance between those is 3, Cut that in half, you're at one and a half, so you're going to be at a, at a fractional value. You're going to be in between two points on there. If you do it by taking the average, you're taking the average of one, two, three, and six. Three plus six is nine. Half of nine, of course, is four and a half, which would make sense. One, two, three, four and a half. It's right in between those two. It's one and a half away from C, and it's one and a half away from D. So your coordinate would be four and a half, positive four and a half. These last three symbols, I'm reviewing this again from the front of the page. What does it mean when there's nothing over the top is what I'm really trying to review here. It's not point A and D. If you flip over to the front of that page again and remind yourself, this is asking you for the length from A to B. This is asking you from the length from C to B. Or going backwards from B to C. From A to D or from D to A. What is that distance? What is that length? Using again this number line. So from A to B, we already kind of did that a minute ago. That was six units. And again, if you're trying to figure out how to find that, you subtract them. So it's negative seven minus negative one. And you'll notice, my sh I'm showing my work here, I have little absolute value signs. Distance can never be negative. So I have to get positive six. So if you were to subtract those in this order, you'd actually get negative six. A distance is always going to be a positive length. Even though you might be going left or right, you might be going in a negative direction. Distance itself will always be positive. And then from C to B, Keep, be careful because you're going from a negative to a positive here. It's four units. And again, we always want to keep it positive. So you'd write an answer like that. CB is equal to four units. 
And then from D to A is basically this whole span all the way across here. Going from negative 7 to positive 6 should be 13 units in distance. And again, the absolute value sign, you don't have to show that, but that's just part of the way to keep this sign positive. So you're done with that. Find the, the 1.2B notes, get a title on there, and then this is the title box, and this is the first postulate of that page, which I'll talk about in the next section here. I'm going to pause this thing and come back in part two, I guess.